I have focused a lot of my research on squamous cell carcinomas of the skin. This type of skin cancer uh, comprises approximately 20% of all skin cancers that arise. Squamous cell carcinomas undergo a very predictable pattern of development. Typically they arise in chronically irradiated or sun damaged skin. They go through a intermediate phase, oftentimes, in the form of a precursor lesion known as the actinic keratosis. These lesions are usually small, they're somewhat rough uh, when you feel them on the skin, and under the microscope they begin to start, uh, they begin to show features of atypical cells that are more typical of cancer cells. Now a small fraction of these actinic keratoses, or AKs as we call them, eventually progress into invasive squamous cell carcinoma. And the reason that this cancer represents an opportunity for cancer prevention is exactly that sequence of events. Is that there's actually a, clinical ident a clinically identifiable precursor lesion that you can treat before it gets to carcinoma and before it has the potential to spread to other organs. The methods that we're using to identify these genetic transition points is a combination of two approaches that we think are quite novel. The first is that we are isolating normal skin samples, AKs, and invasive squamous cell carcinomas in matched sets from the same patient. Uh, in this way, we're hoping to minimize the type of variability between samples that exists. Uh, in these types of studies. The second part of our approach that's quite novel is the use of a UV-driven uh, squamous cell carcinoma model in mouse. The uh, ability to then compare the genetic defects uh, in this mouse model to those that arise in humans uh, enables us to really identify what the biologically important events are in each step of the transition to cancer. Once we obtain the specimens in the lab, uh, we process them so that we can extract DNA and RNA from them. We actually validate each specimen histologically. We actually homogenize the tissue in a blender and we then extract uh, DNA and RNA from that. And ultimately, that purified material is sent for sequencing. We were very excited um, on the Duncan Family Institute's Executive Committee about Ken Tsai's program. Specifically, it complements nicely another program that we have in the Duncan Family Institute, which is the Premalignant Genome Atlas. Ken is attempting to do something in skin very similar to what we're doing in the PGA more broadly. All of cancer progresses through a series of stages, at least that's the current theory. From, from, normal, um, from a normal epithelium through, through a variety of um, sequential stages. And Ken is attempting to do the exact same thing in the skin that we're looking at in the GI tract, in the breast, in the prostate, and in a number of other organs. And understanding those determinants, those molecular determinants, is really essential to being able to identify better uh, markers of risk, better um, markers of progression, better markers of response when we apply an intervention, and ultimately even identifying what we determine to be targets or, or aberrations that can be targeted with medicines or other approaches to try to prevent that progression. Uh, we believe that by identifying the particular genetic defects at every stage of development of this cancer, from normal skin to irradiated skin to AKs, and eventually to inv invasive carcinoma, we can design therapies to interrupt that process at each stage and in that way prevent cancer development instead of trying to treat it once it's metastasized potentially. I'd like to thank the Duncan Family Institute for their support of this project. The fact of the matter is if we're going to make significant strides in bringing down the number of people who are affected by cancer, a prevention is the perfect way to do that and probably the best and most cost-effective way to do that.